Welcome back to Let's Talk Chelsea. I'm Daniel Child. Hope you're doing really well on this Tuesday. This show is mainly going to be looking back at the footage we got from the club of the first day of preseason training with Enzo Maresca. Um, we will talk about some of the players, some of the faults that people have had, and also who we think, who I think, who you think is going to be the big surprise of the preseason for Enzo Maresca, or just generally because I've seen a lot of conflicting thoughts about that. I'll give you mine. We'll also talk about some transfer stuff, uh, winger situation, Chelsea being offered certain players. But why now I'm a bit conflicted in that area, to be honest, compared to where I was a couple of weeks ago. I explain how, how I feel about that in terms of the rest of the transfer window. Please do hit the like button. Please subscribe. Don't miss any of the content. Please do get involved in the comments as well and get your thoughts in terms of preseason, in terms of Enzo Maresca, in terms of the transfer window. It'd be interesting to hear what you have to say. But let's jump in with obviously the first day of preseason. So we did react to Enzo Maresca's first interview. That's already on the show on the podcast feed. Go and check that out if you haven't already. But moving on to his first day, I think the first thing to reference here, uh, Cy Phillips uh, Talks Chelsea was reporting that Maresca delivered a heartfelt and motivating speech regarding the season ahead and the goals they want to reach together. He also spoke and detailed his style of play and what he expects from the players. The atmosphere, as you suspect, would be good. I mean, the weather hasn't been good. I think it's been quite funny watching a first day of preseason where Enzo Maresca is wearing a gilet. You know, it just shows you how bad the weather has been in the UK. Uh, it's been absolutely atrocious. But natural, I think we will get more kind of in-depth about this. You, you do get this with, with new coaches, kind of ha what they're doing, what's unique compared to, say, the predecessor and how players are liking that. It's kind of standard fare. But that was kind of reflected, especially in terms of the detail over his style of play. What I assume is in reference to this because I've heard, you know, we heard about this at Leicester. There are shots in the footage where you see, I think it's just Trevor Chalaber and, and Sanchez in the shot, but I assume other players were doing this as well. They were sitting down watching footage on an iPad or a laptop. I wouldn't be too surprised if that is data and footage that they've been given by the coaching staff that Maresca wants them to look at because that's been referenced before of something that he wants his players to do so those were kind of little bits that people picked up on obviously once they got out of the testing and they went to do the beep test which I think uh, Malo Gusto won and it was nice to see that Tosin Adarabayo new signing was very vocal very supportive of both Malo Gusto and Ben Chilwell who were the last two doesn't really surprise me those are probably two of the best athletes in the, in the first team squad um, and then of course they moved on to kicking the ball around and you know we saw Enzo Maresca involved and a lot of people liked the fact that he was so involved and what was he doing what were the moves that are being um, orchestrated at the time I do want to give some credit to Seb C and I will link this down below in the show notes and in the description box he did a brilliant thread that was kind of really breaking down a lot of this stuff from a coaching perspective because we see a lot of these videos every summer and you know if, you, if you're not someone who works in the game it's kind of hard to always distinguish why is this being done why is that being done what are those specific things because you only really see small glimpses really I mean the clubs don't really are never going to upload a full training session for obvious reasons so it was nice for him I think from a coaching point of view he really did explain some of these drills and and what's being done on the first day of preseason. so I definitely suggest go and uh, look through that thread because there was a lot of great detail but let's just go through some of the players uh, that kind of came to mind when I was looking through this footage and I think Andre Santos and Cesare Cassidy, you know, two players who mid midfielders, Chelsea have so many midfielders and we've heard about Andre Santos that the club apparently want to keep him around in the first team squad. I think it could be the same case for Cesare Cassidy. Cassidy had a weird season. He went on loan to Leicester, ironically, with Enzo Maresca and you know, of course, now Maresca is the head coach. You do ponder whether is that a positive or a negative? I, you know, I think it it could obviously work in his favour because he'll have some knowledge, obviously, of Cesare Cassidy firsthand that he got the, the first half of last season. But there's so many names within there now adding Kin and Drewsbury Hall to that list as well. So I, I don't think both will be here by the time we kick off the season. I think one will absolutely be on loan or even maybe sold. And I think that Andre Santos is one that obviously excites a load of people. We haven't really got any look of him properly. I know he had a, a little brief cameo at the start of last preseason, but for him, I think it is obviously imperative that it, a decision is made what's going to suit him for minutes because he cannot have another situation where he goes out on loan or stays at Chelsea and barely plays for half a season. That is just a complete waste of time. 
So that, of course, needs to be figured out. I, I do want to give some credit to Mikhailo Mudrik because he was another player pictured with Enzo Moresco during um, the, the footage. And, you know, it's quite surprising, actually, because he's one of those players I didn't suspect to return instantly because, of course, even though Ukraine got knocked out in the group stage, I would have thought it would have taken a, a little bit longer to get back to preseason. But apparently he's returning. It may have something to do with an injury he picked up whilst on international duty at the Euros, but it's good to see that he's back early. Clearly wants to make a mark, clearly wants to make an impression. And hopefully for him, that that gives him an opportunity for Enzo Mareska. Because obviously for him, this is a huge season. It really is. I, you know, I think if, if Mudrik has another season like he just has, and I'm not saying that there was absolutely nothing good that Mudrik did last year, but by no means was it a success. You know, by no means can you say that Mikhailo Mudrik looks like a player who's destined to be a first team. And no matter what the club have invested in him, I think if he has another season like he just did under another coach, you know, I think serious questions are going to be asked about Mudrik. So for him, it's really imperative that he makes this preseason work, makes this season work, because I think for his Chelsea career, I think it's very important. Sterling was another one that, that flashed up. It's very easy to forget some players. Sterling is one that I, I still am I'm pondering. I know I tweeted this and some people disagreed with me. I could see him starting against Man City. And sure, there are some other names now back fit, if they stay fit, who obviously could change that. But I think if Sterling sticks around, because the problem you've got is who's paying that wage? Who's taking him off Chelsea? Other than Saudi, which apparently, at least from last summer and quite recently, he's not interested in. So you've kind of got to make it work. And I do think that Maresca, like with a lot of head coaches at this level will look at experience and even if some people have you know suggested of course he was at Man City and, and, and would have known why Sterling left Man City but Sterling is one of the more experienced heads in the, in the dressing room and I just I wonder if he has a good preseason will he find his way back into the team I mean it's kind of that classic clean slate thing which in some ways is a positive for some players but also I guess from a fan perspective if you've watched a player fail or struggle you get a little bit frustrated because you know, we're we just going to waste time basically walking towards the same destination. It's going to take a little bit longer with Sterling. So that's a real headache for Chelsea because if they can get him off the wage book, that's obviously huge because he is the highest earner currently, but doesn't seem to be the case. Will he fulfill a real bench role this season? I'm not sure. We'll, we'll see how that plays out. Christopher Nkunku and Romeo Lavia are the other two, obviously two players who I know this is more extreme for Lavia, but you know, two players who didn't really feature as much as, as, we, we hoped and especially in the case of Lavia played one cameo that I was there for post Christmas didn't see him again in Kunku did of course finish the season playing and scored a goal against Brighton I feel like these two players could be very integral I feel especially in the case of Nkunku his positioning his role is going to be very very interesting to me under Maresca because you know, he doesn't really play a 4-2-3-1 um, he doesn't play a 4-2-2 and again with Sterling could we see a scenario where Nkunku is playing off the left where he I think played towards the end of the season when he was coming off the bench for Pochettino and whether that's the role he, he plays because you can't really see him as a centre forward because you think Jackson will, will play that role but obviously we want Nkunku in this team because we see when he was fit last season how much of a an effect he, he made I, I think that obviously the Palmer positioning too on top of this is is also of interest because he was moving more centrally for Pochettino at the end of the season does he then move out to the right again where he played the majority of last term. So I, I want to hear your thoughts on that, you know, in terms of positioning. Are you not that fast? Are you just kind of open-minded of, of wherever they go? You know, you still think it's positive they're on the pitch or is there kind of a position that you feel these players have to be playing this season? Let me know your thoughts. Let's move on to some transfer stuff before we wrap up today. Felix Johnston reporting that both Donnell Malin and Karim Adeyemi have been offered to Chelsea by their agents in the last week. The two are not linked. They don't share agents. Malin via SEG both offered to multiple clubs with Adeyemi also offered to Spurs, Liverpool and Juventus. We're kind of getting into a position now where, you know, players are being offered. That doesn't really mean that Chelsea are, are sniffing around and saying, yeah, we absolutely want to get this deal over the line. I am now quite conflicted on the winger position because we didn't get Michael Lise. He's now gone to Bayern Munich. And I felt that was, you know, it would have created clutter, but I, I, I still stand by the fact I think that was a big missed opportunity by Chelsea, Chelsea this summer to really upgrade. I thought that would have been a really, really shrewd piece of business. And when I when I see the fact that Bayern paid about 50 million for him, I, you know, I, I don't think that's the most ridiculous move. And I think he'll obviously prove to be quite a good player for them. But we move on. And 
Nico Williams continues to be ruled out simply for the financials. And if you're going from a, a belief that Chelsea financially are just not only unwilling, but are just not in a position to spend significantly, I then look at players like Karim Adiemi and Malin, and I sort of think, well, they're not bad players. Like Adiemi played in the Champions League final only a couple of months ago. He was obviously a part of the Borussia Dortmund team that did well. These are not players who have played in bad environments or at least, you know, they're, they're absolute rubbish. That's obviously a, a silly thing to say, but they're not exactly players where you think to yourself, well, is this actually moving the needle substantially anyway? And then you kind of get back to a place I was before. I, I even think before Pochettino left Chelsea, where I just ponder, you know, is it just a smarter thing, especially out wide where we have so many names and the fear of a bottleneck is already there to just look at what you have and try and develop that internally. And actually, you could be saving yourself quite a lot of money this summer because you couldn't get the first choice. You're not going to move for Nico Williams. The other names out there that have been talked before, again, there is a bracket that Chelsea have moved themselves clearly out of. And once you move out of that, you then risk just buying kind of squad filler players who want substantially better with what you have. And I always think that when you get into that area, you should be looking not only obviously at what you, you could develop and, and promote from the academy, but then also just what you've bought already. Like Chelsea have some very young players and they have players who theoretically could still get better. You know, Mikhailo Mudrik, for my criticism of him, still a, a youngish player with, with years left to grow. Um, obviously, Nani Manawake, Cole Palmer, although he's now a star of Chelsea, he is still a young player. He's got years left to grow. But he, you also think of uh, Murray Kellerman, who Chelsea just invested in over the summer. You think about, obviously, uh, Angelo. The big thing that keeps on coming up, and I know this can't be rectified by Maresca right now, is next summer when you've got both Kendry Paez and especially Estavio Willian arriving at Stamford Bridge. So you've kind of, because of the talents and the investment that's been put into those players, you can't exactly overlook that. You can't exactly forget about that. You, you, you've got to prepare for that. So it again, leads me back to a path where I feel like Maresca will probably be well suited to look at what he has, maybe get maximum out of players you also have the ability to promote from within like a Tyreek George who I, I really think is going to be an exciting player to watch over the course of this season because I really do hope he sticks around and I think that the conference league I keep saying this and I think people it's easy to forget the conference league provides Chelsea and Maresca and just a lot of players the opportunity to play significant minutes not only in the group stage but maybe beyond that as well so I, I think you, it'd be a wasted opportunity if Chelsea don't look at that unique thing in the, in the conference league. Not that you don't take it seriously, not that we don't want to win it. We want to win it. We have to win it with the quality we have. But you can obviously use it to your advantage. You can use it to give players minutes to develop young players and to see what you have in a more concrete way that maybe you didn't have last year when you didn't have European football. So I feel like that in itself is an opportunity. So I... I, I'm now personally of the belief that because obviously Nicholas Jackson, we know, can play out wide too. You can maybe keep da David Dachafana. He plays more of a central role. Maybe you buy another striker. So the idea that it's a winger or, or nothing else. I mean, I know Chelsea have, and Matt Laura has continued to say that this is one of the areas they're targeting. Um, but I think a, a conversation over what we have actually may be a smarter one for Chelsea in, in the short and long term. That That's just my view because... Again, you know, I don't want to sit here and, and waste energy talking about players that Chelsea clearly are just not going to sign this summer unless they do a massive U-turn. So that's kind of my position. Is your position similar? Do you agree, disagree? Let me know in the comments below. But that is it. I'm sure we'll be getting more content from Oreska. I, I think the next big thing before we eventually do get to the US tour is, of course, the press conference. So we'll see when that happens and we'll react to that as well as any other news coming up at Chelsea over uh, the upcoming days and weeks until we get to the start of the season thank you again for watching follow me across the socials and as well listening leave the podcast a positive rate and review and i will see you again very soon all the best